Hello, everyone. My name is Hyun Sung Yu, and today I am Mustafa Bemana, our second speaker. Uh, we talk about a persistent-driven hybrid composition for multi-layer accommodative displays. So, although VR and AR display technology have been advancing rapidly in the last last few years, um, the visual experiences provided by those devices are still far from uh, real-world viewing experiences. One of the great uh, uh, major problems with those consumer devices uh, versions of accommodation conflict. So when you see objects in the real world, two things happen, versions and ac accommodation. Versions is the binocular eye movement uh, which directs both eyes towards the target, and accommodation is the adjustment of focal power of the eye lens to acquire a sharp retinal images. So in real world viewing situation, when the user look at far or near object, uh, two mechanisms occur consistently. However, uh, in, in, both, in commonly used the single plan 3D displays, um, those two can match only at the display plan. And uh, if a uh, user observe uh, object at different depths, then two cues mismatch. And this, uh, this mismatch is called versus accommodation conflict. One way to solve this uh, problem is to introduce is to introduce additional display screen. So this kind of uh, display architecture is called multiple end displays. So once you have an uh, additional display screen, then user can focus at multiple depths uh, without any problem. Interestingly, uh, studies show that uh, this multiple end display can project volumetric images and trigger accommodation in between and to display plan so that user can uh, focus at any arbitrary depths. But in order to uh, achieve this volumetric image projection, we, it's critical to find the proper uh, decomposed images. So this process is called 3D synthetic composition, and this is the main focus of our paper. So there are several algorithms to perform on this in the composition. The, the simplest algorithm is called linear blending, which decomposed uh, images based on the depth map. So for example, this front dish uh, is front projected on the front panel, and this back dish is projected on the back panel. And those two middle pieces are projected both on front and back panel. So it can be performed in real time, but it produces strange artifact around occlusion boundaries as shown here, and also at no numbers and surfaces. So in order to handle this uh, problem, we need to use more sophisticated algorithms. Uh, one approach is retina optimization. So this algorithm decomposes images in such a way that they produce um, a, a focal stack as shown here. So as the user focus there, as you usually change their focus, they will see correctly blurred images. Another approach is uh, light field synthesis. In this case, the algorithm decomposes images in such a way that um, they produce those, this light field information. So in this case, target light field, are, target light field views are generated for multiple viewpoints inside uh, IPPL. So this is a summary of uh, various uh, algorithms. So linear blending rule only requires single image and depth mass, so it can be performed in real time, but it produces uh, artifact for those cases. Uh, retina optimization and light field synthesis are slow uh, because they require focal stack or light field as in input, which are costly, and also they require iterative algorithms, but it, they can produce correct images for those cases. So as you can see, there's a clear trade-off between image quality and computational speed. Therefore, the key idea of our project is to develop a hybrid decomposition and to take advantage of individual algorithms. In our approach, we combine linear blending and light field synthesis, but our approach also can be applied to combine uh, retina optimization and linear blending. Also, for all those algorithms, uh, eye tracking is an essential component for scene alignment. Therefore, we further introduce foveate rendering to enhance 
the computational speed even further. So this is our methodology. So basically for a given 3D scene, our goal is to um, split the, the scene into two parts where we perform light field synthesis for high image quality and where we perform linear blending for computational efficiency. And we found that for there are two key factors for um, quality and efficiency trade-off, and they are texture and depth discontinuity. And for each case, we perform a series of processual experiments to test whether people can distinguish those two algorithms or not. So if they uh, can, cannot see the difference, then we simply use linear blending for, linear blending for computational efficiency. And when they, could, they can see the difference, then we further perform theoretical analysis to find the uh, image which, uh, algorithm which provides better image quality. And our conclusion was that we can use linear blending for texture region, and we should use light field, light field synthesis for uh, depth discontinuity. So as a parameter, spa parameter space for our perceptual experiment, um, we considered um, that with various special frequency and luminance contrast and depth displacement. And our perceptual uh, per experiments showed that linear blending rule and light field synthesis are distinguishable for those cases. But our theoretical analysis showed that linear blending rule is closer to the ground truth. That means that we can, use, we can always use a linear blending for textured reader. For depth discontinuity, we considered various depth difference and various luminous contrast and eccentricity. For example, the gauge position is here, the, then and this part of the image is, shown, is projected in the fovea, but when gauge position is here, then this part, the same part of the image is shown in the periphery. That means that artifacts from the linear blending rule is blurred, that means we are less sensitive to those artifacts. So we found that light field synthesis is only required for those cases. And the last section will be presented by Bostaka. So, uh, so far we have shown a model that uh, based on the perceptual experiment, which takes a single view and depth map and the gate direction as input and which predicts a mask with indicating the region that's required a light field rendering. Then we um, render uh, the remaining eight views only at the position of white region in the mask. We use NVIDIA uh, optics uh, ray tracing for the rendering. And uh, then we use our hybrid optimization, uh, which, which does uh, light field synthesis for the mass region. Uh, and for the rest of the scene, we do linear bending to uh, compute to decompose images uh, for the front and back displays. Now we first evaluate our um, method uh, in terms of visual quality. Here is one of our testing, which has um, various depth discontinuity with uh, uh, different contrast at the edges. As you can see, um, uh, for the linear bending, uh, it produces some artifact uh, around the dis discontinuities. Uh, but for the life field synthesis, uh, as you can see in the right, right column, uh, it, uh, the, the edges are reconstructed uh, without any problem, but it is slow. And finally, ours in the middle column, uh, which can also reproduce, reproduce the edges correctly, but it can be achievable, but it can also achievable in a real-time performance. And uh, we also, we have done use a study to, uh, to confirm the validity of our uh, proposed method. Uh, here our display setup that we built, uh, it uh, consists of two uh, 2K displays and a beam split uh, and a uh, magnifying lens for each eye. And we uh, had three uh, test scenes for our experiment. And below you can see the re outcome of the experiment. The height of the bar showed the percentage of the uh, user preferring our method compared to the other method. And uh, in terms of comparison with uh, linear bending, uh, user prefer ours. Uh, and in comparison with uh, life synthesis, 
uh, user had similar preference except for the last scene. Uh, we dig more into details about this scene, and as you can see, for this scene, um, ours can um, reproduce. Uh, this scene has a, a kind of high texture frequencies, and ours can uh, faithfully reproduce these uh, high textures. Uh, and you can see for the live synthesis, it looks blurry. And, uh, but after experiment, uh, the, the user reported this high frequency texture as a noise pattern, uh, and they tend to, tended to prefer the live synthesis, however it looks blurry. And uh, in terms of performance, we checked the runtime for different mask region. Here in this uh, figure, zero correspond to the case that we only do uh, linear bending. We render one view and uh, do linear bending. And 100 consider, uh, correspond to the case that we do live field synthesis. We, uh, we render uh, all views and we do live field synthesis. And for our case, uh, for our uh, tested scene, we had almost around uh, 9 to 10% of the mass coverage in the scene. So for this amount, we had uh, performance, we had the real-time performance. And as you can see, uh, this saving actually coming from uh, rendering part, since uh, we do rendering only for the sparse light field, and uh, the, the main computation coming from this region, the saving coming from this part. And also in terms of temporal coherency, we check the we check the temporal coherency for the animated scene here. This is the uh, capture result from our display. And the red, uh, red, uh, red mark in the middle of the screen shows the gaze direction. And the right, you can see the mask. Uh, as you can see, as you can see, the, the, while the uh, cubes are uh, rotating and um, coming forward and going backward, and then uh, we don't see any vi visible artifact, and the, result, as you can see, looks uh, temporally uh, coherent and stable. And in summary, uh, we proposed a hybrid method which uh, combined two existing method, which one is uh, low cost and the other one is like uh, high cost, like uh, synthesis. And uh, we have shown a real time performance uh, with high fidelity reconstruction in a multi-layer uh, live field display setup. And one, uh, one of, um, kind of, uh, one of like, important takeaway of our work is that the high cost method, I mean, live field synthesis is not always the optimal solution. We found that uh, for the high texture reason, uh, li linear blending, uh, which is low cost, is necessary. And live field uh, synthesis is only necessary for the occlusion boundaries. But uh, also we taking into account the gaze information, we can also relax this condition for the large eccentricity. And also we had an efficient implementation of SART, which is the optimization algorithm uh, for the life is synthesis. And uh, we, by, this, uh, by, this, uh, uh, by this efficient implementation, we made the computation time for this method as short as possible. And with this, I conclude my talk, and we are looking forward to your questions. Very nice paper. Uh, I'm Henry Fuchs from UNC. Uh, do you have um, um, some notion of where the near and far planes should be depending on the situation and applications? For example, if we're doing something indoors, the near and far plane you know, may be different than if we have an outdoor application. Um, do you mean the placement of those two displays? Yes, uh, yes. So uh, yeah, in this project, we only considered a uh, very small uh, display separation, like a 0 0.6 diopter. Otherwise, we cannot project volumetric images. So yeah, you know, to generalize into our work into more diverse situation, I think we need to place more depth plan, and we need to investigate our algorithm in those situations. Thank you.
So I was wondering the to the original Martin plan display is based on the fact that the light from the uh, multiple focal planes, like the far and near planes, add together versus the light field Martin layer is based on attenuation. Therefore, the light is filtered, or you may think as a multipli multiplication um, operation. So the two doesn't seem to be combined in the way that you are describing. I wonder your decomposition, how did you consider that? Um, excuse me, I, clearly, I didn't clearly understand your question. So, 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 I so guess I, are you referring I'm to multiplicative uh, displays? Yes, the multiplane display is based on the fact that light added together, you think of it as an addition one added to another, that's why the linear filtering works, um, the linear blending works, versus the multi-layer attenuation, the light field synthesis is based on the two layers of light get filtered from one to another, it's a multiplication um, operation. Uh, so so that the sense of the composition would be different for the two different types of architecture. Yeah, uh, so we, we um, I'm not sure I understand it correctly. We, we consider the auditive displays only, so I, I think we can discuss details yeah, later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.